no, okay, so that worked first time. Um, excellent. So um, I'm going to start off uh, today talking about XPath and XQuery, and then Georg is going to move on and talk about SQL. Um, so XPath is uh, it's a really small language that actually we saw some of yesterday, um, as Matthias showed us some um, some of the functions for using XPath um, in Python with Python libraries like eTree. Um, but that sort of language itself, it's a small language for selecting nodes within an XML document. Um, it's not really a query language, I guess, um, but it forms uh, a component part of multiple languages that are um, all part of the XML ecosystem, such as XQuery. Um, which we'll see a tiny bit of, and some XSLT. Um, so, uh, XML. Um, on the left here, you can see my pointer. Yes. Okay, so um, on the left here, we have some XML. This is from, again, from the ministerial roles, but I've cut down a lot of details, so it's only a few elements. We've got the header and this text element, and there's only a tiny bit of text because I cut all the rest out. Um, so, um, as I was saying on Monday, you can think of XML as a set of nested boxes. So there's this TEI box contains the TEI header box, and this text box, and the text box contains this body box, and so on. You get the idea. Another way of thinking of uh, XML, though, is as a tree. Um, and in fact, the idea of a tree structure is more kind of fundamental to the data model of XML in itself. Um, it's kind of like a family tree, except that unlike real human family trees, um, each um, item can only have exactly one parent, which is why boxes have to be nested within boxes. You can't have two parents to split half the box into. Um, and the whole point of XPath is that it lets you navigate up and down and across this tree in all directions. Um, and incidentally, before I carry on, because I could use this word a lot, um, an element in an XML structure is called a node, the same time we were using talking about um, nodes in network graphs. This, I mean, the tree kind of is a Sorry, my mouse is also like dies continually, um, as you just saw. Um, so I'm going to have to use the trackpad. Uh, yeah, so all of these are nodes in this structure. In fact, this is kind of a graph. It just everything connects connects to the root node, and then everything descends from there in tree structure. So xpath, the forward slash selector selects the root of the document. I always get confused and think this ought to select the first, the root element, but it doesn't, this is the whole document. Oh, I press space twice. Um, and then after this slash, you just put the name of an XML element that you want to find. So this says, well, find, start at the root of the document and then give me an element that's called TEI. So this will select this top TEI element here. Forward slash, um, incidentally, is a sort of shortcut for this descendant thing here. Ah, sorry, I keep pressing. Oh. Um, this is actually a shorthand for child. TEI, so saying from the document, any, we want any child that has this name TEI, so this will select this element here. Um, you may be thinking this looks a lot like um, things like URLs and file paths in, especially in Unix, not Windows, which uses a backslash, but it's the same idea that we're saying, well, start here with the TEI, start here, this is the root, and then inside this, we want this thing called TEI. As I just said, yeah, this, so you can treat this like a file path almost. So we're going to say start with the TEI, with this TEI element. Look inside that for a TEI header element. So then this is going to find this 
node here. Or conversely, we can find the text inside the TEI, which will find this text node here instead. And then you just work your way down. So we want to find some paragraphs. So we're going to go through TEI, text, body, div, and then paragraph. And it's going to select both these paragraph items here. And it's, you may be thinking it's a lot of work to go down through text, body, div, paragraph. And what if you didn't know exactly where the paragraph was within the div? What if there was a subdivision of some kind? I don't know what kind um, that that paragraph was located in, but you didn't really care where it was. You just wanted to find all the paragraphs that were in the body, say, or that were in the text. You can use this uh, double slash selector. So what this says is, well, we're going to go from, we're going to look in TI, then we're going to look in the text node here, and then we're going to find a P that's at any level. So it could be immediately here, it could be here, it could be all the way down here, just happens not to be. And this double slash is um, a shortcut for this uh, descendant operator. And so what this also means is that if we ask for this title, it's going to find a title anywhere inside this, inside the uh, top level TEI element. So it's going to find this title here that's in the uh, title statement. If we go back to the XML originally, there's one title element here that's um, in the title statement. And then there's also this title here that's um, a title that's actually printed on the page of the text that it's being encoded. So it's going to find both of those. Um, but what if you wanted just the title from the metadata? Well, in that case, you just have to be more explicit about it and say, well, actually, we want the title that's in the, want to find the title by going through the TEI header, the file desk, the title statement, the title. You could take shortcuts here if you use them so you were certain that there was only one title in TI header, say, and in this case that's true, but there may not be. If you want something really specific, then you need to be really specific, is the only rule, I guess. Um, I need this, uh, there's also, um, to get the text of an element, there's this uh, text function. So what this will do is it's going to find the TI element, find this text element here. It's going to go down any level to find a paragraph. So it's going to jump straight from here down to any paragraph it finds. And then jump down to any contained text at any level. So it's going to find the text that's an immediate child of paragraph, but it's also going to find the text that's part of this highlighted reference string is this guy's name. You can also uh, work your way back up the tree using this uh, parent selector. There's no shortcut for parent selector. Whereas for child, you can just omit the child and put more slashes in. For parent, you have to spell it out in full. So what this is saying is start at the top, go down any level until you find a title. So we've gone down to here and then find the parent node. And this node is any node. So we can go, we go down to this title and then back up to the parent of title, which is title statement. Or on this side, we go all the way down to this title and then back up to the parent, which is this div here. Are there questions? No, no, sorry. Okay, almost. Um, and XPath also has the uh, possibility of filtering nodes by using predicates, which are the things in square brackets here. Um, for 
clarity in this, tea, in this uh, tree diagram, I missed off all the uh, attributes. But if we look back, we've noticed that the title and the title statement has this uh, has, has a type attribute with a value desk, whereas the title that's in the text has no attribute has no type attributes at all. Um, so we can use this uh, predicate and square brackets to restrict the kinds of title we want to find. So what this says is go down any level you like from the root, find a title, but the title must have a type that's equal to desk. So what this will do is we'll go down to this title, check that it's got a type that's equal to desk. That's true. It'll go down to this title here, but it has no type that's equal to desk. It has no type, it has no attributes at all. So that one won't match and you'll just return this one. Um, it's also possible to kind of put anything you like in a predicate. And if it evaluates to true for a given element, then it will select that element. And also note that just the existence of something is truthful. So here we're saying we want any node that contains a title with a type. So we find this title statement here. It actually check, it's actually going to check every element. So it's going to say, well, this, does TEI have a direct child that is a title? No, because it's direct children a TEI header and text. And then TEI header and ask the same. And eventually it will get down to this title statement and say, does it have a direct descendant that is a title? Yes, it does. And does this title have a type attribute? Yes, it does. So it will select this title statement. The only other element here that has a title as the child is this div element, but the title here doesn't have this type attribute, so it doesn't select this. Um, and finally, um, what you can also do is use um, integers inside these uh, predicate square brackets to as like a numerical index. So say you want the first paragraph of the two paragraphs in this div, this one will select this paragraph. Uh, note that unlike most other programming languages, and if anyone could tell me one that doesn't, uh, these ind indices in um, XPath start at one, not zero. So in Python, to get the first element, it's element zero. In XPath, it's element one, which makes more sense, I guess. Um, and finally, there's, if you want to get the very last one, there's this uh, last function there, which is uh, quite useful. Um, so, um, oh, that's not very long at all. So, assuming my mouse works again. Yes. yes. Um, I'm going to quickly uh, switch to oxygen and look at some of the, uh, you can see my desktop there. Okay, so here in oxygen, I've got this uh, XML document, I'm make that a bit bigger. Um, You'll notice here, there's this uh, X path bar at the top. Um, I'm really sorry, I was actually gonna use oxygen for all of this demonstration, but you can make the text size bigger, but you can't um, increase the size of any of the interface elements. So I might have to uh, squint a tiny bit. Um, so what you can actually do is if you set this to evaluate XPath update on cursor move. What this is actually going to do is if you just click anywhere in the document, it'll update to give you the full path all the way down to this point. And it can do attributes as well. I find this is really useful for figuring out paths if you want to, when you're building up XPath expressions, 
to make sure that it actually works. There's also, um, you can switch to this XPath builder view, which will let you just type in XPath expressions. So for instance, we can, um, what do we want to find? Okay, so we have this list person here in the TI header. This is the list of all the people who participated in this meeting. And we can find this just by, so we can start off, well, we can start with the TI, we could work our way down to this. And that's going to find all these surnames. I'm just going to find this surname, but it's also going to find any surname that's in a person name, it's in a person that's in this list person. So we can jump down a few steps here and say, well, just jump straight to the abstract. And this list person, and we want to find every person name. We just want to find every person. So we can run this and then it will highlight at the bottom of the screen, it gives you a list of all the nodes that match. And it also highlights the results here. So that did what we want. And say we wanted this person's surname, you can just drop down to paths, add surname, run this again, and then it's just selecting the surname element. Say we wanted the surname of the person who has this role chair. Well, we've got this list person here. We've got this person here. We can stick in this predicate here and say, well, we want his role to be equal to chair. So this is going to restrict the person elements we find at this level to the ones with this role equal to chair. And then it's going to find the surname of that one person that matches. And it does, it just finds this guy here and his name is Kaiser. Um, that's pretty much it for XPath. There's actually a lot, there's a lot more detail. There are a lot of functions that you can use. Um, in various ways for different things. Where where do you open the XPath Builder? Um, so if my mouse works, the XPath Builder, if you go to this, um, you have this bar at the top here, this little cog here, if you click this switch to XPath Builder, this opens up this window here. And I think you can actually type X query into this as well, but um, let's leave that for now. Okay, so I think I can go back to the presentation. It's going to on the same screen. Excellent. Okay, um, and when we move, if we have time for a breakout session, I've got a few um, other challenges to uh, look up in the XML document using XPath. Um, so before I actually talk about XQuery, um, which is what I'm supposed to be talking about, I did just want to mention XSLT, um, which stands for Extensible Style Sheet Language Transformations, which horrible name. Um, and the purpose of XSLT is, um, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I can't hear what's going on. Um, okay, so the purpose of XSLT is, um, is, um, Whereas um, XQuery is really used for querying languages, um, XSLT is, as the name suggests, it's for um, doing transformations from XSL, from XML documents. So with XQuery, as we'll see in a second, uh, when we look at it as an example, um, XQuery is kind of for pulling bits of data out of XML documents at various points and doing things with it. XSLT, the strength, you can use XSLT in the same way, but its real strength is just for doing, it's for transforming XML documents. Um, 
And the way this works is, um, incidentally, XSLT is written in XML syntax. That's why it looks like XML, and it can be used to output XML. So we have this XML style sheet, which is the root element here. And inside this, we just define some templates. So we start off with this template here. This match attribute actually takes an XPath expression. So here it's good saying we're going to um, match the do root document node. We're going to put all the contents into a body tag, because it's HTML, say. And then we're going to apply all the other templates that are relevant to this TEI, to the TEI text element within this. And then there's another template here that we've specified, which will just match any TEI highlights element. We'll wrap that in a strong tag and then go away and apply all the templates. And the way this works is it just works its way top to bottom, depth-wise through the XML document. And when it finds an element that you've specified a match, um, an XPath, expression that matches the element it's come across, it will apply this template. So what this one will do on the H on the XML we were looking at a minute ago is take the text element, stick, wrap it in a body element, and then turn each of the high elements into strong. And that's just all it's done. XSLT is really, really useful for transforming things, not just to HTML, but also to um, if you just if you encode say a hundred of documents and you decided that instead of using the name tag with an attribute person, you wanted to use the person name tag. Instead of having to go through all of your hundred documents and change it, or use something not as reliable like find and replace, you can use XSLT to write as you can write an XSLT template that will just copy everything, except that it'll change out the bits that you specify. Anyway, um, XQuery. There's really not um, a lot of time to look at all the features of XQuery properly. Um, XQuery was originally designed, as the name suggests, as a query language for XML. But it's now, it's the full functional programming language in its own right. Um, that's already used in lots of different cases. So it's sort of two uses really are first the kind of as a query language for in the same way as SQL or Sparkle is used as a query language. Um, but it's also used as for developing whole applications, especially in native XML databases, things like ExistDB and BaseX. Um, but you can also run it in Oxygen. So I'm going to just jump back to Oxygen and hopefully I'll show you this. Um, so here I've got this uh, X query document. Actually, yeah, I have to open this. So I've got this saved in a folder along with this file we've been working on here, and also the list of persons which have all these um, identifiers and the full names of. So using this, um, excuse me one second. So using the, um, this X query, what I'm doing first of all is I'm opening up document, the, the um, ministerial protocol document, and then straight after this, because this is now a document node, this is as if you'd just come in straight with xpath and gone forward slash. This is a document node, and straight after it, ah, you can just write xpath. So x, unlike we're looking at using XPath in Python yesterday where you had to call its same function. You had to call a specific function to operate on an e-tree object. 
here, this is, this is an XML document. This is XPath, it's all baked right into the language. So what we're doing here is we're going to the document, we're going to select the TEI node. Incidentally, this TEI here is the namespace. Um, everything is within this TEI namespace. We haven't, we haven't really looked at namespaces at all yet. Um, basically, every TEI element is in the TEI namespace. And here I've declared what this TEI namespace is. And I've used it wherever there's a TEI element. So I found the root TEI element and I've assigned this to uh, this document variable here. I've also opened up the list persons document and assigned that to this list person here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to return a really simple web page. So it's an HTML document. There should be a header, but I've skipped that. Um, this is just a brief header. And then we get to some xQuery and you can um, embed xQuery directly into XML structures or HTML in these curly brackets. So what this line says is, first of all, find each of the titles. So we're going to, with, we start with our document here, which is where we've stuck the file that we've unloaded. We can go down to this title statement, find the title. And then for each title, because there are about five of them. Yeah, all these titles here. For each of these titles, stick it in this title variable and then return it wrapped in an H1 tag with just its text. Doing a similar kind of thing here, except that I'm finding the person, all the people in the document from this list person, again, by navigating straight down to it with XPath. Um, and then extracting the, the ID of the person from its reference attribute. So the reference attributes look like this, and they have this uh, hash on it. So What I'm doing here is just skip this substring is going to skip the first character. It's going to start on the second character. And then what I can do is I can open up this list person and find the person whose XML ID matches this name. And I can set this now to the person. And then I can add for each of these people in as a list item contained within a hyperlink and the hyperlink is set to the value of the, to these, uh, It knows here and then their, their role in the meeting and their name and for name. And you can just go ahead and run that and when I apply it to this document this is what you get. Um, it's really horrible and ugly but it's just pulled out the five or six title elements and made them h1s and it's also grabbed all the people and made a link to these pages. Um, that's really it for um, x -Gray. As I said, there's a, quite a lot more to you can do with it. Um, and especially as part of XML native databases like x uh, like ExistDB or BaseX.